Hi and welcome to my channel. Let's paint this juicy and luscious strawberry. If you would like to follow along, full step-by-step -step classes on my Patreon and here I will show you the process it took to paint this realistic strawberry. So now I'm showing you that for this project I'm gonna be using masking fluid. That is basically a latex based substance that you apply on watercolor paper, let it dry and it prevents from watercolor soaking in into the paper. So basically you can preserve the white highlights. So with that masking fluid I'm gonna be covering all the white highlights and all of the seeds. So now for this you need to use some brush that you essentially not afraid to ruin because if you leave that masking fluid dry on a brush it would ruin the brush so you need to wash it thoroughly after you finished. But a little pro tip if you dip that brush into liquid soap before you dip into the masking fluid it prevents from that masking fluid drying out on your brush. So now onto the mixing the colors. So first we're gonna mix up the colors that you can see underneath the main red color. So all those highlight and shadow colors and everything that you can see under that red. So first is purple and I'm using my Rose Matter Lake with a little bit of phthalo blue to create this really nice purple. And as I'm using limited palette usually for each project, so I'm gonna be using some pink later on. So I choose to create my own purple pink with a little blue because those two colors are going to be used throughout the painting instead of just reaching out for already pre-mixed purple. That way your project stays coherent and all the colors sort of doesn't clash with each other if you'll use limited amount of pigments. So second one is this shadow color on the right hand side of the strawberry that you can see underneath the red is like dark red. So I'm using Sennelier red and adding again phthalo blue to create this uh, shadow color and a little bit of yellow because you can see at the very top of the strawberry some yellow hues underneath the red so i'm applying all my base layers with wet on wet technique meaning i glaze the paper with clean water first that way i can apply all my under layer colors leaving them with very soft nice edges So starting with my purple, then a little bit of shadow color and a little bit yellow at the top and that's it. And I want to leave a little bit lighter edges therefore I will clean my brush take the water out and I will mop up a little bit of that color around the edges and that's it I leave everything clean because that's where all the main red color will go so now we need to leave this layer dry completely once it's dry we're gonna reglaze with water and apply our second layer with main color so our main color will be Sennelia red and the shadow color Sennelia red with a little bit of phthalo blue so basically it's the same color that I used before but it has a little bit more red in it and as I mentioned we're gonna need a little bit of pink so nice and even water glaze first goes on my strawberry all the way to the pencil line making sure I have no puddles or drying patches so you need to make sure the glaze is very even. So I'm starting with my main juicy red color and drop it right in in the middle of the strawberry. So I don't go all the way to the pencil line because that's where a reflective light is around the strawberry and I apply shadow color. So you want to keep those edges clean because that's where you can see all the detail in the strawberry and all those little crevices of the seeds are the most obvious. So I'm mopping up a little bit of color that started to seep in and apply a little bit more red color in the center where it's really, really um, saturated. So before my glaze dries, with clean damp brush, making sure I have no water in my brush, I lift a little bit of highlights around some of the seeds. So now we need to leave this layer dry completely and we can remove our masking fluid and we will start painting all that beautiful detail. So just rub surface with your clean fingers and the masking fluid comes right off and you can see it kept white of the paper. So now in this step what we want is to paint all the areas around the seed. So define the seed and the highlight 
and only paint those round circular crevices around the seeds. So now that process is very detailed, it takes time, but every time I paint something, I try to structure the painting into very clear and understandable and achievable steps so that there is clear system and path that a person can follow along and be able to actually paint it. So in this step, now we only paint the crevices around the seeds, defining them and in the later stages we're gonna join them painting around all of the seed areas that we painted just now. So it's very detailed work and as you move towards the right hand side of the strawberry you use a little bit stronger pigment and darker red color and I always have a second brush in my other hand that I keep clean and damp in order to soften some edges that I want to and not have very strong uh, watermark. So once that step is done, with clean and damp brush, I lift a little bit of highlights around those seeds that I just painted in order to create a little bit stronger contrast. Once that is done, it's time to connect all of that detail that we just painted and paint around the seeds that we painted, leaving and making sure we leave all those highlights. So with second brush, soften all edges that you want to have very soft bleed. And just paint your way through the strawberry, connecting all the parts, painting around, making sure you leave the highlights that surrounds the seed shadow. So it is very detailed and time consuming process, but if you love painting, it will be a joy. So for this I want to use quite a dry brush so I have just enough water for the paint glide very easily over the watercolor paper surface but it's not very wet that I would create very thick brush strokes and leaving perhaps some little puddles. So you want very even color and control so you keep your watercolor sort of a little sticky mixture rather than very watery. So now the main detail is done and we can paint in the seeds. So for that I'm gonna need three yellow colors. For the first yellow will be Ireland yellow, for the second will be Quinacridone gold, for the shadow parts and then I need a very dark yellowy grey tone for those really really dark parts around the seeds. So to start with pick up your lightest yellow and color all of the seeds. Then we can pick up our darker yellow, warmer yellow and paint in the shadows around those seeds. And this color goes basically on the left side of the strawberry where the highlight falls and as we move towards the right hand side of the strawberry the shadows around the seeds are much darker so I pick up my third yellow mix which has some neutral tint in it and it's much darker. Some seeds you can see are completely black even on that side so we're gonna be making sure we capture that because the contrast between light and shadow is what gives the realism to each subject. So once we've done that, all the elements are finished and painted in. What we want to do now is pick up my smallest brush, which is number zero, Winsor Newton Series 7. That is the brush I use for all my last detail. And I'll just go around the strawberry, just defining edges, sharpening the seed edges and defining the highlights or maybe even toning down some highlights if they are too light. Just basically painting in the last detail and correcting the tonal values. So I want to tone down some highlights or paint 
some shadows darker for example on the right hand side that i just mentioned those seats need to be really really dark and almost nearly black so we do want this contrast and so basically just now i'm putting down a little bit of last detail here and there to create a stronger contrast using quite a dry brush again so i guess you could call it dry brush and that's the technique the dry brush that i use at, at the end of each painting right so the strawberry is done all is left is to paint in those leaves so for this i'm again using the same pigments that were used throughout the strawberry painting and that is phthalo blue with a little bit of ireland creating this slightly more bluish tone of green and then second mix using exact same pigments but has more yellow in it so it's a little bit more fresh green color Then we need some really dark and beautiful green, this rich color. So I'm using all the same pigments plus Quinacridon Gold and creating this more saturated dark green. And also we need a really, really dark green, nearly black for those few parts. So again, using all the same pigments, but plus adding Sennelia Red to create the darkness for that green. And that's it. So those are our green pigments. And I start to paint with wet on wet and so basically I apply a little bit of water on some of the bigger leaves and start applying my colors on that water glaze. So the areas are quite small so it's easy to put all the colors down, lift off the highlights and even with one glaze you can create really good tonal values. So lights and shadows and different colors as it's very easy to manage small areas. So the areas that are very small, I can paint straight in with wet on dry without glazing the paper first, just using clean down brush off in any hard edges. And when you lifting off the highlights, you want to make sure you don't have water on your brush. So you need to clean your brush and dab it on your towel to take the excess water out. Because if you drop the water in a settling wet glaze, that water immediately will bloom and will leave a mark as the water will push the pigment into the sides. So always make sure you take the water out and that's how you can collect the pigment of the wet clays creating those very nice highlights. So as all of the base layers now are applied on the leaves, I just need to correct the tonal values and strengthen some color in some of the leaves. So with wet on dry, so basically paint with wet paint on dry paper and soft on hard edges with clean brush. And just here and there darkening and sharpening all the lines, edges and the dark colors. After this, I can create a little bit of veining on a main leaf that you can see. So those veins are lighter, so I chose to just lift those veins at the end with clean down brush, slightly rubbing the surface of the paper and dabbing with kitchen towel to absorb what I lifted off. And you can see now this leaf has very nice subtle veining. 
and that is it that was my strawberry painting i hope you enjoyed if you want to follow along join my patreon community where i upload new tutorials every month and if you would like to see shorter versions like this one click that subscribe button and i'll see you in the future videos bye bye